The following podcast is a deep, shallow dive production. And you're going to love it. Okay, let's go. One thing, they, they use this term preventive chemotherapy in the statement, um, which I think is a very non-medical term. I mean, you don't give chemotherapy preventatively. Um, she has cancer. We don't know what kind of cancer it is. And this is typically something that's referred to as um, adjuvant chemotherapy, meaning something alongside the surgery now that's being given. But, you know, what stands out to me is that, you know, it's, it's very touching, but we don't know the cancer. We don't know the staging. We did not hear anything from the medical team saying, hey, look, we expect a full recovery. She obviously has said that, but it's, um, there, there's, there's a lot of um, uh, questions, I think, that still remain and uh, need to be answered, I think, in some way. You know, these are medications that are typically given uh, in the bloodstream. Sometimes they can be given as a pill orally. Um, if it's given in the bloodstream, then people do typically go to the hospital. Of course, we're talking about the royal family, so I think anything probably is possible for the royal family in terms of doing it more privately. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Hope you guys had a great start to the week. For those of you that didn't get a chance, there's a quick deep shallow dive in five yesterday that really just kind of touched on a lot of the things we're going to talk about today. But there was a there was a good interview with Vice President Kamala Harris at the beginning that kind of touched on the things in regards to Israel and Benjamin Netanyahu and then the UN Security Council ceasefire, which finally passed, even though the United States abstained, meaning they basically sat out, but they did not veto it or they did not say no, which would be an immediate veto. So anyway, it's an easy one. Five minutes. Give that one a listen from yesterday. But I wanted to start out today. I'm not going to talk about this a lot because, man, this this Kate Middleton thing, I think Kate Middleton is kind of like Taylor Swift. She's got like a gang of people that love her and, man, you cross them and and, 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 and you're in trouble. And you know what, to be honest with you, she's always seems like a super nice person to me. And so I don't have anything against her. So I don't want to, you know, stir up controversy that doesn't need to be stirred up, but I would like to make a couple comments on it. And that clip, which we're going to listen to the rest of it. So this is Dr. Sanjay Gupta on CNN. I'm not even that big of a fan of that guy, but you know, I thought it was a fair, I thought it was a fair take that he gave on CNN where, you know, like, like there's so many people that were basically saying, oh, look, look, everybody, she has cancer. You should be embarrassed about how you've acted the past couple weeks, blah, 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 that type stuff. You know, I don't really agree with that because first of all, if you kept track of that Kate Middleton if you've kept track of the entire saga, I mean, again, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, I hate to say it, but when you are that famous and someone that is that much in the public eye, and by the way, when you're a part of the royal family, I mean, your job is kind of to be famous. I mean, you're you're getting taken care of by the English taxpayer to kind of be famous and to be a spokesperson, you know, most people don't understand, you know, they don't really rule England. It's not like England's not really a monarchy where the royal family has, you know, power in terms of political decisions or economic decisions or, you know, deciding on war or things like that. They're not, they're not running the country along those lines, they're more of just a, a faceplate for obviously the English monarchy. And so, you know, because of that and what comes with all of the benefits of that, you know, they're, they're held to a slightly different standard in terms of being out in the public eye and sort of representing the good of humanity in terms of England. And, you know, the fact that Kate's been kind of MIA since January, again, re regarding her health, I hope if she has cancer and I shouldn't say if that sounded kind of bad, that's a 
Chucky Ducky quack quack right there. But regardless, I wish her nothing but good health. How about that? I'll just leave it there. Moving on. You know, they just, they just haven't hand. It's just been weird. It's another thing that's just been super, super, super weird. Even the video that she put out last week. I mean, man, there's a lot of controversy on it. I'm not going to get into that controversy. All I'm going to say is, you know, it just, I don't know, just feels slightly off to me in general, the entire thing. All right. So listen, let's listen to the rest of this Sanjay Gupta. Um, but as Max said, it can be several weeks of, of these therapies and they're designed like the, the, the basic notion is we did the operation. Now we find cancer. There's likely to be some cancer that is remaining in the body. Let's give chemotherapy to try and target those remaining cells. That, that's the basic sort of idea behind chemo. But I, I, I almost can't say anything more than that because we don't know what kind of cancer. We don't know what stage. We don't know what the chemotherapy is. And we don't know even you know, what type, meaning what, what you need to be uh, even in an outpatient setting in the hospital. All right. So, you know, again, the weird part is they still haven't said what kind of cancer she has, how far along she is, what stage it's in and all that. And again, I know there's a a lot of people, I I read a bunch of social media stuff on this and like, I hate to say it, this is not meant to be sexist, but primarily women came to her defense and, you know, pretty much shut down people that were saying, oh, she should tell us more and be more forthright and all that. And I mean, again, if it was maybe anyone else, sure, I could see that. And those people deserving the ultimate amount of privacy. But, you know, celebrities and especially the royal family, and again, especially because of the 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 life that they are afforded, they, they just do, they have a certain responsibility. I mean, that's like, that's like the price of admission, I guess. So anyway, where I net out on it is this, I, I do think the way it's been handled is odd. The whole graphic design thing. If you're not familiar with that, they put out a Photoshopped graphic design picture for mother's day. I thought that was weird. Like just you know, you're not the first person in the world to get cancer. You're not the first famous person in the world to get cancer. You're not the first famous family to have to deal with something. You know, just be forthright with people and 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 come out and be honest instead of making it super weird. And then secondly, you know, I don't I don't think it's inappropriate for the public to question anything these days. Seriously. Look at look at the state of the world since March of 2020 and with everything that has happened and everything that's just continues to happen honestly things deserve to be questioned in a respectful way and I think that the public the American public the English public the public in general you know, we've got the, we have the, the right to simply ask questions. That's all. I really net out at that. Like where, where I disagreed with a few people I talked to about this was bottom line is there's nothing wrong with asking questions. There's nothing wrong with, you know, just trying to get a little clarity. And I think we deserve that, especially again, when things get, delivered in a way where you can poke a hole in it. And there were things about the entire way this has been handled that you can poke a hole in. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. All right. RFK Jr. is announcing his vice presidential nominee, his running mate today. I'm not sure who it's going to be, but there's a lot of talk about this woman named Nicole Shanahan, a lawyer and mega donor who was previously married to Google founder Sergey Brin. So anyway, that is what people are thinking the choice is going to be. It is not going to be Aaron Rodgers or Jesse the Body Ventura. And much to my dismay, I do not think it's going to be MC Hammer. Please, Hammer, don't hurt him. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer gave a pivotal speech and said, you have lost your way and called you an obstacle to peace. Take a listen. 
the Netanyahu coalition no longer fits the needs of Israel after October 7th. And I believe that holding a new election, once the war starts to wind down, would give Israelis an opportunity to express their vision for the post-war future. Chuck Schumer is the highest ranking Jewish elected official here in America, a staunch supporter of Israel. What's your response? I think what he said is totally inappropriate. Uh, it's inappropriate for uh, uh, to go to a sister democracy and try to replace the elected leadership there. That's something that Israel, the Israeli public does on its own, and we're not a banana republic. I think the only government that we should be working on to bring down now is the terrorist tyranny uh, in uh, Gaza, the Hamas tyranny that murdered uh, over a thousand Israelis, including uh, some dozens of Americans, and is holding Americans and Israelis hostage. That's what we should be focused on. And as far as uh, what Senator Schumer said, the majority of Israelis support our governments. 82% of Americans support Israel instead of Hamas. But All right, let me jump in real quick. So Netanyahu with CNN's Dana Bash, that was on Sunday. You know, the stuff that I really want to start calling out is like what he just said. He's like 82% of Americans support what we're doing. No, they don't. And first of all, where do you get that number from? There was not a poll of all of Americans. And then the answer was, yep, 82% came, came and said, we support it. So this is the type of thing, you know, I want to point this stuff out because you've got to pay attention it's like when it comes to television and any, any type of media, you know, people are just throwing out the facts and statistics of what they want. And unfortunately, not a lot of people will question it. So a lot of people will hear that Netanyahu statistic, 82% of Americans support what we're doing. No, they don't. That has not been fact checked by anybody. It's not even a fact. Anyway, I wanted to use that as an example. I mean, that kind of goes along the lines of, you know, the way the Trump thing was, uh, the bloodbath quote was misinterpreted. And again, this is just calling a spade a spade. This is just calling a spade a spade. I literally could go and pull up things that Republicans, Democrats, you know, whomever, you know, uh, honestly, probably anybody and, and call out the BS. And that's really what I want to do. I want to call out the BS with everybody because, you know, the creation of narratives with the the ability through now social media along with mainstream media, it's very influential on on what can be created, what message can be, you know, really implanted into people. And that message might not even be true. The majority of Israelis support the policies that we're leading. Uh, go into Rafa destroy the remaining uh, Hamas terrorist battalions, make sure that we don't put into Gaza instead of Hamas, the Palestinian authority that educates okay. their children towards terrorism and the annihilation of Israel. So this was really the first interview with Netanyahu that I could tell he was definitely annoyed. And, you know, CNN, they're, man, CNN, New York Times, a couple of places, they've gotten critiqued a lot, but, you know, they are, they are definitely pushing the the needle a little bit and so even that makes you think huh interesting interesting that they are finally you know asking the tough questions uh and and also uh an enormous uh, majority here including 99 uh knesset members to nine uh oppose the idea of ramming down a palestinian state down our throats i want to so, get to you know some the of majority those of israelis uh, this is a wake-up call to uh, senator de schumer the majority of israelis support the policies of my government okay. it's not a fringe government it represents the policies supported by the majority of the people if senator schumer opposes these policies he's not opposing me He's opposing the people of Israel. The guy is a good politician. He definitely got unnerved that interview. Anyway, I won't play the rest of it, but she did actually come back and quote some some Israeli media sources that basically said the exact opposite of all of his stats. So anyway, in regards to that, I think, again, something by the end of Ramadan, which is April 6th, so really, we've got 10 more days. I think something major is coming in the next 10 days. I could be wrong, but we shall see.
A very significant development here, seeing this law enforcement action taking place. I'll uh, point out, just to be clear at the outset, we don't know that Sean Diddy Combs himself is the subject or target of a federal investigation. So it's just worth pointing that out at this hour. But what we do know is that two properties associated with him, uh, we saw the feds descend on those properties. We saw an aerial footage, uh, federal agents both here in the Los Angeles area as well as in uh, Miami at those residences. Now, the Department of Homeland Security, their uh, what's called HSI, Homeland Security Investigations gave CNN a statement. I'll read you part of that when asked uh, about what this activity is. They say that earlier today, HSI New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. That is it, confirming that they are conducting what they're, they're deeming law enforcement action, which could uh, indicate uh, search warrants being conducted there, uh, could indicate arrests being conducted. We just don't know at this hour specifically what that law enforcement action is. Can't nobody take my pride. Can't nobody hold me down. Oh, no. <laughs> he did. He got to keep on moving. And supposedly he is moving. The, his jet was spotted online in Antigua or, you know, how they tra tracked online in Antigua. So anyway, P. Diddy under some major, major, major problems or in some major problems. Anyway, there's been a long history with him. He is supposedly been into some wacky stuff for a long time, but man, it's like coming out. They're coming after him. Bring him out, bring him out, bring him out, bring him out, or bring him in, bring him in, bring him in. <laughs> so that's going to be interesting. You know, I had a few people, they sent me the, the, the fact that his jet was uh, tracked to Antigua and it was like, man, this is giving me OJ vibes. It's like the modern day version of OJ vibes with, with, the, with P. Diddy's jet. Although, man, remember that OJ? I believe that was 1994, the white Bronco. I remember exactly where I was when we watched that I was in the flats in downtown Cleveland with my buddy, Michael Jonathan Crawl, Johnny Toro, for anybody that knows Mike Crawl. And we were in the flats drinking beers. I think we were like just graduated from college. Yeah, 94. And that's when the TV screen had the white Bronco on there. Isn't that funny? Do you, rem do you remember where you were when OJ's Bronco was speeding in Southern California and how funny that I live here now? You probably do. Think about it. Think about where you were. Let me know. Send me a note. Let me know where you were when, when uh, the OJ thing happened. Funniest. I'll, I'll read the funniest responses <laughs> in another podcast. All right. I was going to talk about that that shooting in Moscow. But you know what? I want to wait for a little more information to come out about that. All I'm going to say for now is the the narrative that it was ISIS. I, I don't think that's the case. And if it was quote unquote ISIS, we'll have to we'll have to better define what we actually think ISIS is. But man, something I'm seeing, this is kind of like big picture thing that I'm seeing is God, I feel like I feel like they're trying to create a religious war. I'm not even kidding. Like a religious war between Christianity and Muslims maybe, you know, or Muslims versus Christianity plus Jews. I don't know, man. I don't like it though. I don't like religious wars cuz man, religion is is so personal to people that I think it it becomes it becomes another topic where, unfortunately, rational thinking and common sense sometimes cannot win. So maybe that's exactly why there might be something along those lines. Anyway, more to come on that. That's it. Call a spade a spade. Have a great day. Great night. Talk to you soon. The ending was terrific. This episode is being brought to you by the upcoming book, Deep Shallow Dive Into You. That's right, bro wrote a book, and it's coming soon. Stay tuned.